This is a review of the Hornby um, R3001 Limited Edition. It's the East Coast livery and it's the Battle of Britain Memorial Flight Class 91. It's a uh, limited edition exclusive to Model Rail, um, basically the magazine. Um, it's limited production of a thousand. Um, most of them have sold out, but there are still some at the time of looking at the video, I'm just looking online, they are still in stock at modelrailoffers.co.uk. Um, if you're subscribed to the magazine, you get a discount, which I think is about 10%. But without the discount, they are £109.99. <coughs> That's me. Um, so, um, it's the strike and livery on this one. Um, like I say, it's a limited edition, so I'll open it up, show you. So you get the sleeve around the standard Hornby box. It's actually the more modern Hornby box. So you can straight away see the locomotive as soon as you take the sleeve off. It's DCC ready, because they limited edition of a thousand numbered nine one 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 oh. It's the running number of the locomotive. Um, so on the end of the box, you've got the information. So um, model rail information, DCC ready, and whatnot. So it's limited edition. So it's quite nice to have it sort of written everywhere that it is a limited edition. So what comes with it is the um, detail pack. So there's a, I think a slight upgrade over the um, original Class 91, but it's not major new tooling or anything by the looks of it. Um, so it's a standard operation sheet for this model. It's got information on just basically the standard ring field motor, um, as it's called in these models. So they've kept that original motor, which is a bit of a shame. Bearing in mind the, the cost of it, it would have been nice to have a bit of a upgrade. So there's just a bit of information that will stick, which is quite good. Um, it's done, designed to be powered from the track or by the overhead power supply system, so it has got a still in theory got power to the overhead system, so it says. This is information about revision to what was in the catalogue and um, that you can't power two trains separately or something on the same track. I can't see why, but Hornby probably know best. So, limited edition of a thousand, you get a certificate, mine's nine eight. 984 so it's quite different from the normal Hornby certificates sort of colour printed information on the model so it said about the strong links between Britain's armed forces and the railways and the unique livery applied in on the 2nd of June 2012 reinforces that bond um, such and such so that's really nice to get it's just clear on the back so I'll take the loco out it's more like the background packaging on this but obviously because it's very long and thin it can be traditionally sort of more recently have done really with the longer models. So it all pops out. It's all very neatly packaged in there. Um, you've got the protective sort of um, pads and stuff at the ends to protect the livery, which is really nice to see. So, if I move some of this out of the way, I just put that box in there to hold the box up a bit. So, move that. So you also get in there the Battle of Britain Memorial Flight, Spitfire, Hurricane, Lancaster, Dakota um, nameplates. So you could actually put those over the sides if you wanted to, so that it's got the proper etch nameplates, or metal style nameplates. So as I said in the detail earlier, like I said in the box, you've got the raised up um, overhead gantry if you want it. Just looking actually, the actual pipe isn't actually fitted into the it's a bit poor design quality control fail there that's not actually fitted into the pantograph like I believe it should be it actually looks too long like it wouldn't even fit anyway so that's not particularly good you've got the roof switch to switch it on or off the pantograph so let's look at the livery um, like I said they haven't done any major works but there's just dummy fake lighting effect at the ends which is a bit of a shame and at this end but the livery is very, very, very nice on it. Obviously, a lot of work's gone into the design on this one. So you can see the bright silver fade into the black at the ends. And you've also got the sort of the number of the locomotive with the um, RAF style um, livery on there. Nice detail at the end. So let's look at the underside. 
like I say, it's just a ring field motor. Let's just pop that out. But obviously they've done quite a bit of work with the, you can see, five pole as far as I'm aware with the bigger cogs. Quite a lot of work with all the um, cables in there. Go into more contacts to make it smoother compared to the earlier models. So you can see you've got contacts going to both sides. So all all the wheels on the back there, and probably all the wheels on the front potentially. So yeah, you can see, or well, you probably can't see that well. There's contacts that go into all the wheels. So it should, um, especially if your track's not particularly fantastic, you should um, find that it shouldn't have as many problems with sort of stalling and that sort of thing. So I'll show you it running in a second. I've not actually run it at all yet. Um, so fingers crossed it will run. Um, I don't have any of the East Coast um, Mark IV coaches or anything. So the best thing really I've got is just the older style Intercity 225 British Rail Swallow livery Mark IVs and a DVT. Um, so I'll, um, I'll run it with those. And um, obviously it isn't going to be perfect, but it, um, see how well it pulls them. I've got four coaches and the DVT, so... So here's, um, here she is running, uh, the Class 91. Um, just to give her a quick test run, first run, I must admit, I've, I know it's only the old Ringfield motor and it's um, it's quite sort of noisy really. Um, I thought it was going to be a, a bit more refined than what it is. Whether it's just because it needs a good run in or whether it needs a bit of oil, I don't know. Um, but it runs better really with some coaches behind it than on its own. It's When it's on its own, it's um, it runs smoothly but it's just not that quiet. But I don't really want to give it too much because, like I say, it probably needs a good hour really of running in before you give it any more than one at once. So I haven't got the proper coat on it, but that's about maximum speed I kind of really want to push through it. Because it sounds like anything more than that, and it sounds like it's going to um, cause some damage. But I mean, it runs very smoothly other than that, it's just a bit noisy. I think it's a bit quieter now than it was earlier already, really. So it's got the um, super detailed DVT um, on the back there. I think it's a real shame that bearing in mind they made the super detailed DVT, they haven't upgraded the, the power car as well. I mean, whether that's a sign they're not actually going to make many more different models, I don't know. But they've made the, um, the sort of flying Scotsman East Coast models and things, which I guess the coaches for this would have been better with this. But I guess maybe that's, they're not going to push it anymore. Who knows? Um, I just think it's a bit of a shame that they made the DVT so they could have easily, I don't know if that's a Mark III or Mark IV DVT, but um, they could have obviously easily tweaked it to do the Mark IV rate. Now I don't know with regards to the Flying Scotsman pack and all that that they did, whether they've done a better DVT or whether it's the older style uh, model. I mean if they've kept the power car with the old style, the chances are they would have probably kept the older style DVT to go with it. You can see it, it pulls these, this sort of rake, right? This is about the longest rake really that I can get on my layout without out it looking too stupid really. So yeah, but um, no, it's a really nice livery. Um, so yeah, I, I do I do like it. I just think it's a shame that they didn't kind of push it a bit further. But then if they would have done, you probably would have been looking at sort of 150 rather than 100 odd pound. So you kind of potentially get what you pay for. But you'd think with all the work they did in designing the livery and stuff, they would have pushed it out a bit further. It would be interesting to see if anyone does any sort of upgrades to it to put lights on it or to actually change the motor over to something a bit better. Because I'm sure it must be possible, something like say from the um, Intercity 125 style HST, like the engine and stuff out of one of those, um, whether that would fit would be quite nice. But um, yeah, 